Well, it's about time. Time that the Pixels have gotten proper features befitting other premium tier phones. Finally wiped out my Pixel 8 Pro. It's running Android 15 Developer Preview 2, and that is providing us with actual video output through the USB-C. That's a first for any Pixel. And Android 15 is replacing some of the functionality we used to have in the Android alternative view desktop mode. It's not really a desktop mode, it's just an it's just an alternate canvas that the phone can put out of videos. I'm getting ahead of myself here. The history of Android's desktop mode has been a storied one. Obviously, we've got some successes, like we've got Samsung DeX. That is a lot of custom code from Samsung to make a nice desktop operating system. And the new version of DeX looks like it could even improve on some of the more tablet -y style interfaces that we use on larger slates. I'm a huge fan of Moto Ready 4 and offering the user a couple of profiles that they can pick and choose between entertainment and television or gaming or getting work done in a desktop-like environment. Honor's still kicking around. The Honor Magic desktop is still really solid. And we've also got some alternative view modes on our gaming phones. Things you plug a phone into a TV and it can offer you, well, a bigger screen experience or also a handful of games that can make use of dual display, like putting information on the phone screen while you play the game on your TV. While over the last several years, our phone chips are starting to rival laptop grade compute platforms it's just kind of silly. If you've got an older phone, chances are pretty good you have compute power in your pocket that's going completely untapped, and you might not actually need a standalone desktop or laptop solution if you're already working mostly Chromebook style or web-based applications and, and browser-based. It's a really huge deal that the Pixel 8 Pro is now able to support some of this additional functionality. Google's spin on this is interesting. As, uh, as we've gone for, through the last several generations of Android, we've actually lost a lot of functionality in this alternate view mode. The built-in Android version of this is extremely bare bones, and from Android 10 to Android 13, a lot of stuff got broken. I know I'm kind of oversimplifying here. There are people out of my audience who know all kinds of tips and tricks and ADB commands. And if you flash this ROM and you install this app, you stand on one foot under the blood red full moon, then you too can have a more fully featured blah, blah, blah. That's not what we're talking about. What I want is a phone that I can plug into a cable to another screen and then use it like a computer. I don't wanna have to do a whole bunch of other things to get to that functionality. On this channel, I've gone through several years of looking at Android betas on OnePlus devices. Usually that's been the first uh, option, the first solution where we look at a manufacturer, they put out a beta of the upcoming Android operating system and they support features like video out through the USB-C. And every year we've had people digging through code saying, oh, I think this is the year and Google's really gonna pay attention to the desktop mode and then it never really happens. But from 12 to 13 to 14, it has been dire out there. Things like our app drawers being completely broken and non-functional, losing all of the ability to drag windows around the environment, place shortcuts on the desktop, properly in, uh, interact with accessories, keyboards, mice, etc. And in losing some of that core functionality, it makes even some of our add-ons a little less functional. Really, we haven't been able to do a whole lot. I didn't even do a video on the Android 14 beta desktop mode just because because so many of the uh, the versions that I were playing with would just pull up a blank screen and there was nothing to interact with. But here we are, this is now fixed. If you too would like to try some of this advanced functionality and you're running the Android 15 uh, Developer Preview 2, it's pretty simple just to start. If you have a monitor that has a USB-C input on it, if you've got a portable display, if you've got one of those fancy laptop docks that I like to play with, or some of these new wearable XR glasses. That's the fastest way to get up and running. You plug a USB-C cable into the screen, you plug a USB-C cable into your Pixel and the Pixel will have a little pop-up saying, would you like to mirror the display? And then you say, yes, Pixel, thank you very much. That is exactly what I would like to do. And then whatever's on your phone screen, is gonna be on that screen that you're uh, connected to. Going beyond that, where you wanna see a different display on the external monitor than what's on your phone screen, we've gotta dig into your developer options. Have a little short, that's the quickest way to get to your developer options. You're tapping on a build number, but you can check that video if you'd really like more step-by-step -step instructions. Then you're gonna scroll down through those developer options to find these settings for your desktop mode. You toggle all of those options, you reboot your phone, then when you connect your Pixel to an external monitor, you're gonna get the same option on the phone to 
mirror your display, but now when you select that, you're gonna see a different canvas on the portable monitor. It seems to more correctly pull your wallpaper from the phone, and that's the wallpaper that you work with on your external display though. It does pick a kind of an odd crop and format, which really blows it out. It seems really low resolution. I'm so happy to see a functional app drawer again. So you click on the app drawer and now we can properly scroll through all these apps. For Android 12 on, instead you would click on that and you'd get this weird broken menu that didn't have the right DPI, didn't have the right formatting and you couldn't get to anything in that app drawer. When we click on an app, it's going to launch in a phone style portrait orientation, but we can move it around your display and we finally have these controls returned again where we can maximize the view across the entire screen, we can minimize, and we can close. You might notice there is no bottom dock for minimizing apps. This is very much like Android where you minimize and the app completely disappears. Minimizing still keeps that app kind of floating in the background in RAM. You can launch that app again, but it's like going through the entire process of app drawer, finding it, maximizing it again. And there's no convenient bottom area right now where you can quickly toggle between apps that are currently running. But compared to what we've had for the last couple of years though, this is phenomenally more functional. It just makes sense. There's so much compute power in this thing and you can get it out in a better way when you connect it to a larger monitor and maybe you hook it up to other accessories. It's why I love these little lap docks that have a keyboard and a trackpad. We're not getting all of the fancy stuff that you'll get on Ready4 or Samsung on decks, you know, quickly uh, tabbing apps to side by side, split the view. You're not toggling through apps easily like you can on a Windows machine, like alt tabbing through. That doesn't really seem to work. It's just encouraging that any attention has been paid to this additional functionality. It's kind of silly if you think about it, but you could pick up an inexpensive or sort of a mid-spec Chromebook and end up with a less powerful machine than the phone that's in your pocket. We've been overdue the ability to plug in a phone to a display and get at least some kind of Chromebook style experience. The thing holding us back, we know the thing holding us back, are companies that are afraid to displace other product lines, but in a future of increasing e-waste, mountains and mountains of gadget e-waste, I would really hope that consumers would start to pay attention to some of these advanced features because it means they don't have to buy more computer when one computer can do the job they need. Now, if another company like a OnePlus or you know any of the Oppo brands or Xiaomi me brands wanted to build on top of this, they've got a much better start. They've got a much better skeleton, a much better framework to add other features onto. There's so much extra stuff we can do with a phone now when we can send video out to some other display. I'm very excited to finally have this on a Pixel. It's been one of the rocks in my shoe since the Pixel 3. These phones feel a little less premium when they can't really use some of these more advanced and exotic accessories. Plugging in glasses to watch a movie, that is really fun and our phones do that very well. But I also will throw out the little bit of criticism here where it's been years and years and years of watching the Android desktop mode that it built into Android to sort of be neglected. And four years after LG left the smartphone market, we still can't even replicate the more basic functionality of LG's Screen Plus. After replacing the functionality that we lost over several generations of Android, the only thing that Google seems to have added is the little pop-up when you plug in the cable asking you if you wanna mirror your screen. I really think Google could do better than that. So folks, it's a mix of happy frustrated. I'm so happy to have it, but I'm a little frustrated that companies haven't been taking this more seriously as I think it would help a lot of consumers out. And it's one of those platform defining features. You know, if you really think this is something you might want to play with, it makes sense to spend just a little more to get a nicer phone that can tackle some of this advanced functionality. If you want to sell people more expensive phones and you don't have the status of the iPhone, then the functionality really matters. I would love to hear what you all think down in the comments. Is it a is it a case of too little too late? Are we really just looking forward to ARM chips and PCs and maybe that's what the next era of computing is gonna look like? Have any of you played with Android 15 developer previews? Are you excited by what you see for the official release of Android 15 later on in the year? Drop me the tasty hot takes down below. As always folks, thanks so much for watching, sharing, subscribing, all the support 
has been absolutely amazing. Those of you clicking on links, hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or maybe you're joining the list name, scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the omniverse. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy, basically everywhere. But these days I'm trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons, a little less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and definitely not on the Twitters. And I will catch you all on the next video.